While consumed with guilt over accidentally shooting a young boy, Crockett reconnects with his estranged son, Billy, on today's Miami Vice. Child's Play was directed by Vern Gillum and was written by the late Michael Piller from a story idea by Priscilla Turner. Piller is a very famous name in the Star Trek fandom. He was a showrunner on Star Trek The Next Generation and a co-creator of both Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. This is his sole Miami Vice episode. This is Priscilla Turner's only IMDb credit, though she's a former story editor at Columbia Pictures and has written several books for children. While on an unrelated surveillance assignment, Crockett bursts in on a violent domestic dispute taking place in an apartment. A man named Walker Monroe is holding his girlfriend Annette at knife point. Someone emerges from a doorway behind Crockett and points a gun into the room. Crockett turns and shoots and belatedly discovers he's shot a kid. Walker is played by Pulp Fiction's Ving Rhames, whom we last saw back in season one's The Maze. Annette is played by the late Denitra Vance, a former SNL cast member. The kid turns out to be Annette's 13-year-old son Jeffrey, who was apparently trying to protect his mother. While Internal Affairs investigates the shooting, Castillo tries to get Crockett to take time off and talk to a police psychiatrist, but Crockett refuses. Jeffrey is alive, yet in critical condition. At the hospital, Crockett and Tubbs run into a contrite Walker outside of Jeffrey's room. Walker says Crockett's not to blame for the shooting, and and claims he's been seeing a social worker to help with his anger and violence. Meanwhile, the Vice team investigate a gun dealer named Holiday, who's been engaged in a violent war with rival dealers from Chicago. Crockett and Tubbs pose as prospective clients and visit a pool hall where Holiday hangs out. While The Dream by blues artists Albert Collins, Robert Cray, and Johnny Copeland plays, they interrogate Holiday, who's played by the private dick that's a sex machine to all the chicks. Isaac Hayes, who will always be Shaft. Crockett, who's a little on edge these days, roughs up Holiday. Tubbs calms him down and salvages the deal. Outside the pool hall, Tubbs chews his partner out and Crockett apologizes. Meanwhile, Walker tells Annette to keep up appearances and continue visiting Jeffrey in the hospital or he will kill her. Crockett takes a spontaneous road trip to Ocala and visits his ex-wife Caroline, who is still played by Belinda Montgomery, and his young son Billy, who is now played by Clayton Barkley Jones. Crockett lets little Billy drive the Ferrari and tries to rekindle his distant relationship with him. Caroline, who is newly engaged, wants her fiancé to adopt Billy, which disturbs Crockett. Tubbs, who is paired with Switek in Crockett's absence, meets with Holiday to buy some weapons. Vice raids the warehouse and arrests everyone. Trudy and Castillo notice that among the weapons for sale is a handgun of the same make and model as the one Jeffrey was holding when Crockett shot him. Crockett returns to Miami and tries to visit the police psychiatrist, but ends up just staring at him for a while before flouncing out of the room. Back at headquarters, Castillo is frustrated with Crockett for taking a day off without telling anyone, which is the sort of thing that would get me fired from any job I have ever held in my life. A big shouty scene ensues. There's always an interesting, edgy dynamic at work in scenes between Crockett and Castillo, because in emotional moments, Don Johnson will always immediately bring his gestures and volume up to 11, and Edward James Olmos will then respond by becoming even quieter and stiller than ever. It's always fascinating to watch these two together. Crockett visits the hospital again to see Jeffrey, who's stable but not yet awake. Crockett has been shipping in for Jeffrey's medical bills, but the doctor returns his money because Annette's been paying for the bills in cash, despite being clearly impoverished. Tubbs and Crockett compare notes and find that Annette's gun, the one Jeffrey was holding, was part of a shipment stolen by the gun runners from Chicago. Chicago PD ran the prints on Annette's gun and found that Jeffrey McAllister doesn't exist. He's actually a Southside gang member named Gordon Cavus who has an outstanding warrant for murder. Walker beats up Annette and puts her in the hospital. She tells Crockett and Tubbs that Walker and Gordon Cavus, aka Jeffrey McAllister, were about to kill her for telling Holiday about Walker's guns, and Crockett saved her life by bursting into her apartment. Annette tells them where to find Walker, and while Race Against Time by U2 plays, Vice has a shootout with Walker and his goons. Crockett hunts down Walker, who ultimately falls to his death off a building after Crockett makes a belated and half-assed attempt to save him. Crockett visits a recovering Jeffrey in the hospital, then drives to Ocala again to tell Billy he's going to try to be a better father. This episode has some nice moments. It's not the kind of episode I gravitate toward, because I think removing Caroline and Billy from Crockett's life was one of the smartest things the series did back in season one, because I don't watch Miami Vice to see Crockett arguing about custody matters with his ex. But that doesn't mean the focus on Crockett's family life here is bad, and certainly in the context of Crockett's guilt over shooting a young boy, his urge to reconnect with Billy makes a lot of sense. I will say I think it's a cheat to have the twist that Crockett's actually a hero for shooting Jeffrey, 
because Jeffrey turned out to be a dangerous killer. It seems like an attempt to put a pretty bow on what was a very grim and serious story, and it could have ended up cheapening Crockett's story arc. Thankfully, this episode handles that twist decently. Crockett feels no less guilty over shooting young Jeffrey slash Gordon after discovering his true identity. So it's not my kind of episode, but that doesn't mean it's not a good one, so I'm still going to give it four flamingos. Next time, a drug lord's estranged son returns home and creates all kinds of problems for his family. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you here later.